So when I reach the point with the next lamp and zenith, I will kill again. We love to be told stories. Whether it be by the warming light of a fire or comfortably in a cinema, we love to view stories that come to life within our minds. However, one trope which we love is that of the unreliable narrator. The insight and character study which unreliable narrators provide are endlessly entertaining and plainly just fun to witness as we see the workings of a deceptive character's mind. So today I will look at a film which provides one of the most unreliable narrators put to screen. The House That Jack Built is a psychological horror released in 2018 and presents us with one of the bleakest depictions of humanity put to film. Jack, a manipulative, narcissistic, misogynist, animal abusing serial killer who is being brought to hell by an escort. On the way towards hell, Jack tells tales of several murders he had committed throughout his life and attempts to bargain his way to heaven. He does this by claiming his kills as pieces of art each a spectacle of pure self-indulgence. But what is Jack above all else? He is a massive hypocrite, a complete liar, so caught up in his idea of grandeur that he can't help but manipulate and bend truths throughout the whole story. But why does he do this? No matter who Jack is around, he constantly feels superior. He believes his art must be admired by all, his art itself being murders. A completely self-indulgent act that Jack views as masterpieces. He labels his murders as art just so he can escape the claim of being a merciless killer and not an artist. He does this because he wants to be important. He wants to be viewed as he believes he should be, a genius. Jack's multiple murders are acted upon out of ego, needing to fulfill the void within himself that wants to kill without caring about how anyone else is affected other than himself. That is one of his key focuses throughout the film. Not how the murders affect the victims, but how he himself is affected and challenged. He physically cannot bring himself to be empathetic, because he simply is unable to understand human emotions other than his own. In one scene, we watch as Jack mimics emotions to himself in the mirror. The results are uncanny, as Jack struggles to form even a simple understanding of a smile. He believes he is above emotions as a whole, just like everything in his life. The effect of this scene is in fact only heightened because we know of Jack's narcissism, making him trying to mimic emotions terrifying. This is not a guy trying to make friends, he's trying to lure victims so he can murder them and we're just watching how he goes through that process. He believes he is above emotions as a whole, just like everything in his life, not needing them, and viewing emotions as a thing which slows people down and never creates true art. Jack's obsession with himself is a key reason to why he lies and acts as an unreliable narrator. He wants us to see him as a great figure, so while he narrates, he uses every word to inflate his appearance. As a flawed artist who is always in the right, and surrounded by a world of idiots. However, while doing this, Jack only shows how much of a narcissist he truly is, making obvious lies and unbelievable statements that he sees as facts, which really only show us, the audience, how much of a complete idiot he is for being so blind. Every single horrible thing Jack did through his life, which is basically everything he's ever done, he ignores as a whole and instead glorifies his acts of violence as being a necessity for him, claiming that when the pain of life gets so high, he has to kill and relieve his stress and invest his time into creating his murder art. Even when Jack displays his inability to talk to people in a natural way, he makes everyone else in the story complete idiots through his narration. This is especially evident in the first incident where he describes helping a woman. The victim in this story appears to be Stupid. She constantly teases Jack by calling him a serial killer and begs him for help in the most annoying ways. But what we really see here is a lie, a fabrication created by Jack because he is completely blind to the reality towards him. In his twisted mind, she is begging to be murdered by constantly irritating him and in turn, he justifies why he killed her. In this scenario, he was right. 
but why should we believe anything Jack says? In reality, this woman could have been incredibly polite, and because of Jack's urge to murder, he lied about that part of the story completely. All of this gives us a huge reason for why we love to watch stories through unreliable narrators, because it illustrates how the characters live their life and the way they look at the world. And in the case of Jack, we can see how strong his narcissism is based on the details he chooses to share. Jack is a man, I guess more like a demon, who focuses on the minute and fine details. Truly a man filled with such care and finesse. He has an overcompulsive disorder, so is especially vulnerable to intrusive thoughts which he has to act on. These thoughts intrude into his life and push him to murder. And this is a complete excuse. Using OCD as a justification for killing people and needing order in your life through repeated murders is complete bullshit. This is Jack openly pinning the blame on something he cannot control and attempting to avoid scrutiny. No, Jack. OCD does not make you murder people. Jack just has extremely low impulse control because he loves to be self-indulgent and give himself what he believes he deserves. So anytime he gets intrusive thoughts, immediately Jack acts on them as a way to treat himself. His lack of impulse control also leads to obvious stupidity, such as when he committed a murder and kept going back to the scene just to make sure there was no blood even when a police officer was right outside. Jack's OCD and nature of selfishness makes him act without thinking at all, simply just to do something whenever he wants, such as when he sees an old woman walking down the street and immediately runs over her. In his narration, Jack blames his acts on his overcompulsive thoughts, using his disorder as an excuse to openly lie to the audience. He constantly finds ways to evade the blame of his own doing in this way. The act of killing itself is something Jack is naturally drawn to, and every time he feels bored or unsuccessful with his life, he immediately comes running back to the thing which he feels comfortable doing which just so happens to be murder. While Jack considers himself an artist, architect, and handsome genius throughout the whole film, there is one thing his narration will never admit, and that is the fact that Jack is a complete failure. Besides being the infamous serial killer Mr. Sophisticated, Jack has one other goal throughout the film, and that is to build a house. Who would have ever guessed? Jack, although considering himself a talented architect, never achieves the goal of building a physical house. Sure, he tries and restarts multiple times, but he never actually achieves the building of a house like he always dreamed. Why? Because he is talentless. He has no other talent except killing people, and that isn't exactly something to be proud of. Not only is Jack's house a failure, but so is his life. It's easy to even wonder if he lived at all. Maybe the victims are more alive than Jack is because at least they had families who care and love for them, while Jack has nothing and no one. Not a family member to love, not a house which he built, but just works of his art which no one appreciates except himself. His narcissism has led to his destruction, and this is another reason why we love watching unreliable narrators, to see their fall from grace. While Jack will never admit to this because of his ego, it is clear to see the waste of life he has had. Never being able to properly blend in with society, and failing at all major aspirations he ever had. He will never admit to his failures or the way they feed into his bloodlust because just like his house, he wants to be seen as perfect. So while narrating his successes and failures, he lies. When confronted with a mistake he made or a flaw of his ignorance, Jack simply deflects the comments and makes up excuses to justify himself. Under all of his self-inflated ego, skills of manipulation and skills at killing, Jack's unreliable narration makes him look simply pathetic. Never able to produce something of value his whole life except feed into his selfish greed as an artist who produces work to serve himself. At the end of the film, we watch the character Verge, 
the man delivering Jack to hell, is showing Jack a broken bridge to heaven. Situated in the nine rings of hell, like Dante's Inferno, Jack belongs a few levels above where they are. But instead, like always, Jack's flaws and ego get the better of him, and he attempts to climb across to a place he does not deserve to be in, heaven. This action of climbing a wall to put himself in a better place is the exact same thing he does while narrating. Instead of admitting to what he had done, Jack maneuvers vocally around the issues, such as climbing a wall to avoid punishment in hell. And in the end, Jack fails. Again. Descending to the final level of hell where Satan himself resides. The real house Jack builds throughout his whole life is a place in hell. The fitting ending to our entertaining, unreliable narrator. Jack's lies and the absurd descriptions he gives of his life provide for ample horror and humour elements throughout the film, being the reason for why we love unreliable narrators so much. They simply provide an interesting story, each word they say bursting with character. While I could talk way more about the house that Jack built and have only scratched the surface of this movie, I just wanted to focus on Jack's narration and character today. In a way, I suppose I'm feeding into Jack's whole argument by making this video. I'm talking about him and his pieces, which achieves the goal of discussion which so many artists strive for. But his art is shit. 